Before we start the video, I'd just like to introduce our new revision package. For $10, you get 7 days access to our entire ACCA performance management exam course. For more details, please check out the links in the description below. And now, on to our video. Hello everyone, and how are you all doing today? So today we'll be attempting another past paper question for the ACCA performance management exam. The question we're doing today is from a recent paper, the June 2021 paper. It's scenario one, and it's a question for a company called Medical Temp Co. This is basically a question based on variances, basically the planning and operational variances. And as we know, that variance-based questions are quite popular, not just in section C of the exam, but in the MCQ sections as well. So without any further ado, let's get into the question. So as always, we'll start with the requirements. So the first requirement says, explain why businesses calculate market size and market share variances for four marks. Now, as you can see that it doesn't ask why medical tempo would calculate the market size or market share variances. It's just a generic question. And oftentimes in section C, you get generic questions to start off with in the first part, which for which you do not need to refer to the case. So that's why it's always important to start with the requirement. So we just need to explain why businesses calculate market size and share variances. Now, a common mistake that students sometimes make in this area is they'll start explaining what the market size variance is, what the market share variance is, but it's not about what they are. You can mention what they are as a brief introduction, but then you need to explain why businesses need to calculate these, right? So let's start with our answer. As always, we'll first label our question and part. So this is scenario one, and this is gonna be part A. We'll make this bold. Let's also zoom in a bit so that you guys can see easily, right? Okay, so let's start with a brief explanation on what these are. The market, size variance is another name for the sales volume planning variance right we covered this in our videos planning variance let's just zoom out slightly so that the text can all be seen variance Whereas the market share variance is another name for the sales volume operational variance. So basically these two variances are the split of the sales volume variance into planning and operational components. So why would a company calculate them? Well, simply put, why would a company calculate a planning and operational variance? Because they want to see which, what factors are uncontrollable, which are causing some part of the variance, which is the planning variance and which factors are uh, controllable which are causing the other part of the variance which is the operational variance and then we can also mention some specific points as to the sales volume variance what the market size and market share variance why they are named as such and what they tell the company so we'll start with the main point which is the controllability principle the main reason why companies calculate the market size and share variances is because they need to determine how much of the sales volume variance related to uncontrollable factors which we can mention in the bracket the market uh, size variance and how much related to controllable related to controllable factors which was basically the market share variance what these variances basically indicate are one 
the market size variance indicates if there was any change in the overall size of the market within which the business operates due to external factors outside the manager's control and two the market share variance indicates if there was any change in the business's business's own market share due to the manager's efforts thus both variances give an indication of how the market is changing and how the business is performing against its competitors competitors both of which are critical bits of information which any company should know okay so again it's a four marks so we don't need to go into too much detail but the key points that you absolutely must have mentioned one the controllability aspect the controllable principle and then a brief explanation on why the market size and share variance is what they are and why they're important in that sense so we've done all of that let's move on to part b which is the calculation for 10 marks it says calculate the total market size the planning variance and the mar total market share the operational variance for uh, MTC which is a company medical tempo for quarter two okay one common mistake students make is they don't read the requirement word by word and then they just start the calculation and sometimes they might try to calculate for the wrong period and find that they're not getting the right information from the case so please be careful right so just the calculation no, no explanation or anything so we don't need to do any analysis so let's head up back to the case and read through it for our calculation so it says medical temp co mtc is one of the several agencies in sictopia supplying medical staff both nurses and doctors under temporary weekly contracts to local hospitals information regarding the size of the market for the supply of medical staff is as follows quarter one and quarter two now we need to do the calculation for quarter two so they've given the size of the national market for temporary nurses and for temporary doctors now please be careful we often overlook this in our rush to read the question it says this size in in terms of dollars millions of dollars so 14 million dollars 18.9 million dollars this is not the size of the market in terms of units sometimes they'll give the size in terms of units so this is not how many nurses are uh, uh, supplied in the market this is how much revenue is being generated from the supply of nurses so we might need to convert this into the number of units or the number of nurses and number of doctors as we move along so please always read the numbers carefully to see what these numbers represent is it a dollars per unit amount is it a dollar per kg amount is it a dollar amount is it a unit amount right it's a common mistake that students make so it says the increase in the national market for the supply of temporary nurses is due to a shortage of full-time nurses in Sictopia. That's fine. All agencies in Sictopia, including MTC, charge a single market rate for the supply of each type of staff, $1,000 per week for supplying a nurse and $2,000 a week for supplying a doctor. So we have the rate for a nurse and for a doctor and we have the market size as well. So we can technically find the number of units or the number of nurses and doctors based on these rates. So let's just write our formulas based on which we'll fill, start filling out our information. So rem remember our formula, we're dealing with the sales volume variance. Uh, let's put some shorthands here. So let's say that we'll be using A for the actual numbers, S for the original standard slash budget r for the 
revised standard slash budget right uh, what else we'll be looking at things in terms of units so u can be units and c can be uh, c or p could be contribution or profit per unit depending on which they give us so we'll leave that for now so this and uh, so we have our sales volume variance the formula for sales volume variance yeah let's write that down as well so as a shorthand svv right so there we don't have to repeat that over and over again sales volume variance so the formula for svv the sales volume variance is you have your uh, actual units minus your budgeted units multiplied by the standard contribution or profit per unit so standard contribution or pro we'll stick to contribution for now but uh, if they mention profit we'll just change this right so these are the bits of information that we need so they've given us the size of the market for quarter one and quarter two and they've given us the rate so based on these we'll likely be getting our budgeted units uh, and the like now given the fact that they have both nurses and doctors and separate figures for each we can split the sales volume variance and calculate it separately for nurses and separately for doctors so that things don't get messy so this is our formula overall we can make this for nurses and then we can have a separate one for uh, doctors once again we're doing a planning and operational variance question so as we're familiar with previous questions as well for our structure we can then mention uh, let's give the short hands up above so p is equal to planning since we're already mentioning contribution per unit so forget c p is equal to planning and o is equal to operational so the planning sales volume variance for nurses will be equal to our in the planning variance we compare the the budget the old standard to the revised standard so the revised number of units and since instead of b units this should be s units because our original standard was s minus the old standard so this will be our old standard and for the operational sales volume variance for nurses once again we will have the same formula as the first one only this time it will be comparing the actual units to the revised units so we'll change the formula like this in each of these cases we'll just put our mathematical formula in as well so once we punch the numbers it automatically gives us the result again you can use whichever format you want in the exam for the variance formula while you're practicing for the exam prior in your excel sheets pick something that you're comfortable with that the market can easily read and based on that you can follow that format in the exam so you do not have to follow this one if you like it you can follow it if you don't like it you don't have to follow it so we'll do it separately for each of them and then in the end we'll add them up to get the overall market size and market share variance so after that finally we'll have our market size variance variance and our market share variance and these will simply be the market size variance will be the sum of the planning variances and the market share variance will be the sum of the operational variances so we'll just formatted everything so that we can just put the numbers in and quickly get our calculation done uh, do we need to calculate the overall sales volume variance no not necessarily but it's good practice to do it for planning and operational variances because you can check if you're planning and that your planning and operation variances add up to the overall variance which it always should right anyway let's continue so it says in quarter one, uh, MTC held 30% of the market for the supply of temporary nurses and 40% of the supply for doctors. So at the start of the year, the original budget would have been based on 
30% supply for nurses and 40% supply of doctors in the overall market. And again, remember, with planning and operation variances, you start with an original standard and then it gets revised later on sometime during the period. So at the start of the period in quarter one, there was 30% and 40%. These will be our old standard numbers based on the quarter one numbers of $14 million and $8 million. Once again, we'll have to convert these into units. So what we'll have to do is for nurses, for example, to get the old standard units, we start with our 14 million overall market size. One, two, three, one, two, three. Please be careful with the numbers of zeros that you enter because it's easy to make a typo. Each nurse was for $1,000. They mentioned per week, but I don't think that's gonna make a difference. So divided by 1,000, will give us the number of nurses overall in the market that they expected. And out of those nurses, 30% of the supply was held by MTC. So 42,000 approximately. Let me just check, is it 14 million? Right, no harm in checking once again. Ah, no, I added an extra zero. So it should be 4,200. So please be careful with the number of zeros you add. You could, for example, when adding them, try putting some commas in. Uh, it'll give you the error, but then you can at least confirm that the number you added is correct. Okay, uh, and we know that the old standard number will remain the same here as well. So we have these numbers. Likewise for doctors, same story. We have an overall market in terms of revenue of 8 million. One, two, three, one, two, three. Divide by each doctor makes a revenue of $2,000. So 2,000 and multiplied by the 40% market share for uh, MTC. So we get 1,600 in this case, right? So the common mistake that students were making were they're taking the 14 million for nurses and directly multiplying by 30%. But that would give you the overall revenue proportion, not the units, right? And likewise, 8 million to 40% for doctors. So please be careful. Right, and after that it says MTC uses quarterly rolling budgets at the end of quarter one, it prepared its budgeted figures for quarter two. So it's interesting, they mentioned rolling budget here in the context of planning and operation variances. And in rolling budget, you revise the assumptions every quarter. So they're hinting at us that the rolling budget itself will lead to a revision of the standard and that will give us our revised numbers. And that's what happened, right? Quarter two numbers were revised based on the rolling budget apparently and it ba it based these budgeted figures on the assumption that the company would continue to maintain the market share it had in quarter one it was also assumed that it would maintain its standard contribution margin for both the doctors and nurses so they've mentioned the contribution margin meaning likely we'll need to do the calculation based on contribution but since the market share will remain the same we just need to now substitute these numbers the updated market numbers for quarter two to get our revised standard so our revised units for nurses would be, it's 18.9 million, one, two, one, two, three, divided by once again, 1,000, because they haven't mentioned any change in the rate, times once again, the same market share of 30%, because they haven't mentioned any uh, change in the market share. And likewise for the doctors, it'll be the 8.2 million, one, two, one, two, three, divided by 2,000, into the 40 percent once again there was no change mentioned market share okay and there's a contribution margin of 80 percent have they mentioned any profit margin or anything about marginal or absorption costing no it doesn't seem like it so we can use the contribution margin uh again the standard contribution margin our formula is based on the standard one not the actual so the standard is 80 percent Contribution margin is basically your contribution over your revenue. We already have the revenue or selling price for each the nurses is 1000 for doctors is 2000. So this will become uh, what do you say 1000 per nurse into 80% because it's 80% for both doctors and nurses. So this is 800 and we'll link the formula here. Likewise for doctors, it'll be 2000 into 80% and we'll link the formula here. So automatically, as we're going through the question, we're just putting in our numbers and our calculation is getting updated. Let's go further down below. 
it says MTC is actual figures so now we're done with the standard and revised figures now we have our actual numbers the actual numbers are as follows the total revenue from the supply of nurses is 5.3 million once again revenue in dollar amounts this is not the number of units so we'll once again have to divide by the revenue amount uh, and total revenue from doctors is 3.6 million actual contribution margin for both doctors and nurses is 75 percent hmm but they haven't given us the actual prices so we in that case we'll have to work with the same prices that they gave us before of 1000 and 2000 per week we're assuming that they just remain the same because otherwise they would mention that they were different so we can use these numbers to calculate uh, the actual number then we can see that we don't need to go further because it says this part of the scenario relates to requirement c so all of this is not relevant to our calculation so we just need our actual units once again for nurses the revenue was 5.3 million 53121123 uh, and we have to divide by 1000 now please don't multiply by the percentage of the market for mtc why because these are mtc's actual figures so it's already just mtc supply so we do not need to multiply this by 30 percent whereas these numbers were for the national supply the whole market so please be careful it's easy to make that mistake because we're used to accustomed to using the same type of formula as we move on in our calculation so it'll just be 5.3 million divided by 1000 and this will be the same as above okay and for the other actual units we'll have uh, 3.6 million divided by 2000 so 3.6 million one two one two three divided by two thousand one thousand eight hundred and once again we'll plug in the actual numbers so we should end up with let's put these in uh let's format these 1.24 million market size variance which is favorable because it's a positive number and uh, the other variance is negative so it's a adverse variance so we have our calculation uh, usually it's self-apparent that a positive number is favorable a negative number is adverse but we can also mention that for the benefit of the marker so let's just briefly mention that positive variances are favorable negative variances are adverse not necessary but you know it's just good presentation practice and since this is the actual final answer we'll put this in bold so that the market can immediately see that right so that, that this is the key important part of our calculation that he should be looking for that's the first thing he'll look at that is your final answer correct then he'll go to the working so for 10 marks again just the calculation we've done it let's move on to our last part now, uh, before we move on to the last part, just from a calculation standpoint, from my experience, uh, students struggled mainly in the calculation for getting the revised and standard units because they were confused because they're saying they thought, well, quarter two, we need to calculate for quarter two. So they understood that they needed to use these numbers for the standard but they weren't sure that would these numbers be for the old standard or the rice standard and why we're using this for the old standard. So they have sort of made you guess at it a bit. Not guess, that's not fair to say, but you needed to apply your knowledge, right? Your understanding of rolling budgets and the whole process of variances. How does it work? Your budget is prepared at the start of the year, right? At the start of the period. So whenever you prepare that budget, that's the original standard or budget. That will be at the very start of the year, before quarter one starts. So the quarter one numbers would be those numbers. And then during the year or period, you'll calculate any revisions to the budget that you need to do for your planning operational variance calculation. And they cleverly sort of mixed it with rolling budgets because in rolling budgets, every time you make a budget for the next quarter or next half year, you revise all the assumptions of the previous budget. So automatically that was a hint that this is the old number of the old standard number and this is the revised standard number okay so this is just something to keep in mind i thought i'd share because in my classes this is what sometimes students got confused about now 
let's go to part C of the requirement so for six marks so notice ten marks for calculation first four marks were for general understanding and now six marks probably for the analysis and these will generally be the easy quick marks to get it says discuss the actions of the sales director at cheat go and how this may have impacted on the variances which have been calculated okay so let's go and see what the director at cheat go has been doing so it says the market size and market share variances have also been calculated for quarter two for one of MTC's competitors, CHGO. So this is not MTC, this is a separate company. These variances are as follows. So they've given us the market share size variance for doctors and nurses separately and the total as well as the market share variance. And it says CHGO holds the same percentage of each market as MTC, so 40%, 30%. Uh, it also uses rolling budgets and prepares its figure, budgeted revenue figures using exactly the same assumptions as MTC. Okay. However, when Treatco's sales director had to provide the market size figures for quarter two to the accounts department, so quarter two meaning the revised numbers, the numbers based on which they will revise their estimates, not quarter one, which was the old standard. He deliberately reported these figures 30% lower by excluding the market segment relating to maternity units. So he reported the market size to be 30% smaller. So instead of the 18.9 million and 8.2 million, he reported 30% less, so around 13, 14 million for uh, nurses, around maybe 6 million, high 5 million for doctors. And they're saying, he did it deliberately okay so he was manipulating the numbers the accounts department were unaware of this and the requirement wants us to once again just to recap discuss his actions and how this might have impacted the variances which have been calculated well the good thing is that they've mentioned that the variance uses the same percentage as MTC and same assumptions as MTC so Potentially, if we're not sure of the impact of what he's done, we can just see what happens if we change our numbers up above and the impact of that. Or alternatively, we could uh, see what would happen if we change the overall market size and what happens. So just to illustrate what I mean, let's go by the assumption that what he did, report the market size for quarter two as 30% less. Uh, just so as we don't ruin our calculation above, we'll just copy paste this. We won't keep this in the answer. This I'm just doing to show you guys what you could do to get an understanding. So if you're not sure what would happen by changing the revised numbers, what you could just manipulate the numbers here because the same assumptions are being used. Yes, this is the calculation for MTC, but since there's the same assumptions, we can at least get the impact. Currently, what, this is, what is the old situation? Market size variance is largely favorable, the planning variance, which is outside the manager's control, and the share variance, which is in his control, is at worst. So his performance seems bad. Let's see what happens if we change our revised number. So we revise the market size by uh, divide, uh, multiplying it by 70%, basically. So let's just add some brackets here and multiply this by 70% because we underreported by 30%. So the market size was 70% of what it was. So it becomes this and uh, let's do the same here once again, the revised number, multiply this by 70% and see what happens. So this is what it became and let's copy our formulas from here to see what happens to the overall market size and market share range. So look at what happened. From 1.24 million, the market size variance went all the way down to 908,000 adverse. Whereas the market share variance went from adverse to largely favorable. And if we look at the numbers they've given here, same story, market size variance is adverse, market share variance is largely favorable. So what's going on here? In fact, if you look at the numbers, they're very similar to our numbers over here. So <laughs> I'm not sure, maybe the two companies have very similar numbers. Anyway, but what, what does the story tell us? It tells us that basically, uh, what, what was I gonna say? It tells us that 
By manipulating the numbers, he made the market size variance seem more adverse and the market share variance seem more favorable. Remember, the market size variance is a planning variance. So it becoming adverse doesn't make a difference to the manager's evaluation because they'll say planning variance is outside his control anyway. And previously it was favorable, he, the manager wouldn't have been getting credit for it. Now it's adverse, the manager wouldn't be getting blamed for it. No harm, no foul for him. But the market share variance, which was initially adverse, by manipulating the numbers, he made it largely favorable. So it makes his performance seem that much better. So that's what he's done. He's manipulated this number likely because he wants a bonus. And this is the end result. So we can write all of this down. We don't need to keep the calculation. This was just for your illustration purposes so that you understand the concept and think about it logically, right? Just even if you didn't do the calculation, you could have thought of this logically. What will the situation be? Quarter two numbers have been understated. These numbers will go down. If the revised number of units go down, this variance, the planning variance will become adverse uh, because it's revised units minus standard units into standard contribution. But in the operational variance formula, the revised units are being subtracted. So if this number goes down, it becomes smaller uh, compared to this number, then this variance will become favorable and that would also lead to the operational variance becoming favorable. So we'll start by mentioning this once again, let's just to recap the requirement and make sure we hit all the points. We need to discuss his actions. So that's the first part, what happened as a result of his actions and how this impacted the variance is calculated. So we need to mention exactly how the variances would have been impacted. So let's start by saying the sales, uh, is it director or manager? It's the sales director deliberately manipulated the budget numbers for quarter two by understating the market size. This would have resulted, this would have resulted in a smaller uh, revised number of units being used in the variance calculations. If the revised number of units, revised standard number of units, number of units decreases, this will increase, this will uh, cause the market size variance to go down and seem more adverse than it was initially. Likewise, it would cause the market share variance to go up, which would make it make it seem more favorable than it was. And no need for initially. So we can mention that this is apparent from the number, the variance numbers for Keatco, where the market size variance is at worst and the market share variance is largely favorable. The impact of this would be keeping in mind, keeping in mind that the market size variance is a planning variance and not used to judge the manager's performance it being at worst would have no, not manager, director. We need to be consistent, so let's just keep it as director. It would have no not bold, uh, no impact on the director's performance 
evaluation. Likewise, the improved market share variance will be used and to evaluate the manager's performance, to evaluate the director's performance and show it to be much better than it actually is. Given the fact that the manager, director, I keep mixing this up, did this deliberately, it is clear that this is what he wanted. He wanted the operational variance to look better than it actually was so that likely he could get a better performance evaluation and possibly a higher bonus. This is no doubt dishonest and dysfunctional behavior from the sales director. Okay. Uh, so six marks, I think this should be sufficient. So have we covered once again all the requirements? Discuss the actions of the sales director, we mentioned that, and how this may have impacted the, what the variances which have been calculated. Right, so that's basically it, right? That his actions were dishonest and deliberate, and they caused the market size variance to seem more adverse, market share variance to seem more favorable, so that he could manipulate it, see his performance, make his performance seem better, and possibly get a bonus. Right, so that's about it for this question. So hopefully you guys benefited from this video and uh, I'll see you guys next time.